Let's take our psalm books to page number 183, The Lamb of Glory. Page number 193, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Page number 193. Page number 193. Angels from the realms of glory, bring your blood. stand this evening. We'll open the service in prayer. You have a time of greeting one another and then we'll come back and sing one more song before the preaching tonight. All right. All right. Brother Marcus, would you lead us in prayer, please? Father God, we just come to come before you tonight. First of all, just giving you all the praise and glory, Lord. Just asking you to be uh, with the pastor tonight, Lord, as he gives the message. Be with uh, each and every one of us, Lord. We, uh, we have nothing but you. And so we call upon you tonight humbly, Lord, just ask us for your Holy Spirit to have its way, Lord. Uh, we bind anything that's not from you, and we just lift you up and give you all praise. And, Lord, more than anything today, just thank you for salvation and, and the gift that we could not earn. Lord, we love you, we honor you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. all folks the church tonight.
get our song books again. Let's turn to page number 197. It came upon the midnight clear. Page number 197. Page number 197. singing. Uh, take your Bibles tonight to 1 Thessalonians again, chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and uh, we're going to just start off tonight looking at verses on sanctification. Remember, there are three aspects of sanctification. Have I got that thing on, boys? Am I okay? All right, thank you. Uh, three aspects to sanctification. There's the uh, sanctification of your spirit. When God saves you, He sets you apart unto Himself, takes you out of the world, separates you from the world. Unto himself. By the way, let me get started. We have uh, some letters tonight. From, uh, uh, one letter from uh, Danny's mother, Alice Hopper, for a gift from the church to her, and some of the widows there. And some of the widows have expressed thank, uh, appreciation, and we're just glad to be able to help. It's God doing it. Amen. And then there's a letter from the Messick family, and I won't take time to read that, but pray for them up in Canada and encourage them. They've been up for, I think, man, 30 some years, I believe. Been faithful to the Lord. And remember to pray for Jason and all the folks down there and the Helfriches down in the Mexico ministry there. Getting right into this thing, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 23 and 24 is where we're at. I'm going to continue the message this morning. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y. And I pray God your whole spirit, there's that word whole again, your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm glad for verse 24. 
If, if it wasn't verse 24, I might tend to think that it's dependent upon me, but it's not. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Now, uh, we're going to take off uh, tonight with some verses. Guys, let's go to that list that I had this morning first, and we'll do that first, okay? But as they, I should turn this around, this is kind of funny. Let's, but we'll just now delete from the, uh, does anybody need a handout sheet? If you do, let them know. I, I'll just turn this around for a little bit. Uh, look what's going on at school. I, I turn this around, but you, look what's going on at school. Can you believe they'd teach such a thing at school? Amen. Government, how it works, executive, uh, legislative, executive, judicial branches, and all that. I, I, looked, I started turning it around. Like, Good grief, I'd like being in that class. But uh, I think I think Hannah had, did she have a class for you guys somewhere? Gabe, is that what she? Yeah. I, I got to say this, I had the, just fun with it. Uh, a father in our church was talking about, they, didn't have, they got to, what do you call it, uh, downstairs in class, shop class, whatever you want to call it. And uh, dad was talking about his son was working with him and he was reading the tape. They learned how to read a tape measure in shop class. You know, um, I, don't, I, don't, I know it may not sound like a big thing, but you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to read tape measure. And reading the tape, tape measure is one of the best ways we're to learn fractions. It really is. And so, you know, it's a lot of good things. By the way, we're planning on, I should probably let the cat out of the bag here, but Lord being a helper, we're going to try to buy a four foot by four foot uh, CNC table that you can go on the computer and design things and it'll either cut metal, wood, or plastic. And so the kids can learn how to use a computer, but they'll have an out end where they're able to produce a product. Yeah. Something they can, you know, instead of just sitting at the computer while you can make that. Pray about those things, but I thought that was kind of neat. I'd kind of like to go over that. But we're not doing that now. If I get it turned around, you never know what we're going to do, do we? Amen. All righty. I, I drew out this diagram this evening. Thank you, brother. Boy, that made that so much easier. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I, I like diagrams. I'm a visual person. Uh, it helps me to see something visually. And what I've got here, if this was you tonight, the believer, you were in the world and God saved you out of the world. That's that first aspect of sanctification. He separated you from the world, okay? That's positional sanctification, saving you from the penalty of sin. And so now you're a Christian. And then in your walk with the Lord, God begins what we call uh, 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 practical sanctification. Growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Being further, leaving the ways of the world, the way the world thinks, the way the world looks, the way the world acts, the way the world reacts, those kind of things. And this sanctification process takes place, and it's, God does it through His Word and the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God. Jesus said, sanctify, John seventeen seventeen. sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. And uh, so, we're going to be looking at this. Now, what happens is, and what I want to get across for anything, and for myself as much as anybody, it is not a work of the flesh or even some kind of self-discipline or steps or anything else. The only thing I know that does is when the Holy Spirit of God gives you a love for God that turns your heart toward God, and you're not, it doesn't bother you a bit to leave the world because you realize where that thing was taking you, what it was doing to you and would have done to you. And you in happy, joyful love for God move toward Jesus Christ in a, in a relationship of love toward God. Like you demonstrated this morning with those kids up here. And uh, I think it's pretty easy to understand this morning that if you love him, you know what Jesus said? My commandments are not grievous. This is why I talk about happy obedience. Joyful obedience. Let me just tell you something. I, I got more flesh in me than probably 10 of you put together. If I don't love, you couldn't make me live with Karen if I didn't love her. I don't think you could. <laughs> Shotgun to my head. But I just said, you, you, it don't work that way. We're not made that. We're made in the image of God. God is love. Love has to be the greatest motivator for serving Him. I mean, you know, yeah, there's duty and there's all those things. But I'm telling you, if, if we love Him, it is not a, he said, my, my commandments, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. My commandments are not grievous. And, and we need to get this down and quit projecting to our children or to the world out there, lost people, that, man, it's a real heavy thing being saved. I mean, it's tough. 
I, I never can smile, but at least I'm going to heaven. I, I can't be happy, but at least I'm not going to hell. I, I tell you something, the joy of the Lord is just something we ought to have. I'll tell you the true spirit. But the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God and turns our heart toward the Lord. If you can get your children's hearts turned toward the Lord, you've got it whipped. You've got it whipped. If you can get your own heart turned toward the Lord, you've got, you've got the battle. I mean, the battle's won. As I said, it's not where you're at, it's where you're willing to head to. And so, if this is sanctification. Holiness unto the Lord. Now, we're going to introduce another word tonight that just shocks most people. And I want you to ask yourself a question right now. Would I want to be known by, by my neighbors as a holy person? A person who believed and, and practiced holiness. Would it embarrass me for anybody to think that I, 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 want, I want holiness unto the Lord? It shocks me how we've had sanctification taken out of our spiritual Christian movement. It shocks me how we've let the devil steal that from us. And we've let him turn over here and tell us that we've got a bunch of rules to keep because we're Christians and we ought to like it. When it's sanctification of the Spirit and we can love it. Amen. And that's why there's liberty. And I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this to study about, I wish I could get into some of it. Anyway, this word sanctification and holiness, you, they come together in the Bible. Holiness is actually is a lot the same about sanctification in that it, it doesn't mean you're sinless, but it means that you've been separated unto Christ in a love relationship. And you are, it's, it's, it's set apart. Holiness in its main thing, it means set apart unto God. And uh, I, it's just like this morning, if I was, how many knows that it was dicey what I was doing up here this morning? It was a little dicey. You know, he's got, it's his wife, and I'm asking her to kind of look over at the world, you know, flirt with the world, and it's easy to see that. And I'm telling you right now, the older I get and the further I go, the more, I'm just like the Lord's beginning to show me, Reggie, seek sanctification, seek holiness. So we're going to look at these verses tonight, but this is just a diagram of you're saved out of the world, then you have position, that's positional, you're positioned in Christ. Then there's practical sanctification where day by day, year by year, we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's doing it through His Word. You read the Word. You hear the Word of God preached. Or you're in a Bible class. You hear it. You think, you know what? I need to change this area. And God, it's not a problem. I'm going to be glad to do that. May, might have somewhat of a struggle. But you just pray to the Lord, give me grace in this area to start obeying the Bible. Just don't make it complicated. And so we have this sanctification thing and it drawing us to Christ. Holy, what it's talking about holy is your spirit, soul, and body. And then holiness, H-O-L, is separated unto Christ. He wants, so here's what God is saying. I want everything that you are, spirit, soul, and body, separated unto me. All right, there you are. Okay, and I, I think, I just I hate to say this, but I'm afraid that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to really cut some ice right now, okay? Are you ready? Let's just take our time to do this. At the turn of the century, not, not 2000, but 1900, go back 100 and some years now. In America, you had a Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Baptist, and Methodist were your dominant denominations. The Methodist, the, the Baptists were known for their adherence to Scripture. Okay? And study of and rightly dividing the word of truth. Methodists were known for more of, of holiness and separation, the, the Baptist, uh, uh, how many ever heard a joke about the Amish guy with a cow? They kicked him. He, he went out to milk her, and she kicked him. And she said, uh, he said, I cannot, he said, I cannot uh, beat thee. So he, what did he say? He milked his cow, she kicked him. Huh? But I can sell thee to a Baptist and he will beat thee to death. <laughs> now this is honest history. I, and I'm not against nobody. I'm going to tell you, I don't look at na name tags. I don't care what your name tag is. What I'm concerned about is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You're going to lose all these name tags when you hit, when, when you come out of here. All right. But historically, your Methodists were more no, known for holiness in fact, Methodist was so powerful in American culture that at one time, if you were a 
member of a Methodist church in this country, many cities you could go to the bank and borrow money based upon the fact that you were a, a member in good standing of your local Methodist church. Because they knew you would pay back your bills. You would not leave them hanging. You'd pay your bills. You're known for doing right. Okay? Uh, it, around the 19th century, the Methodists and the Baptists, in a general situation now, not everybody, but in, began to go modernistic. And your Bible situation came in, and it seemed like they left out holiness and so forth, and just like, oh, we're Christians, we can just live this way. And out of that sprang what now is known as your Pentecostal movements. And you had uh, the Assemblies of God, you had Pentecostal Holiness, Church of God Holiness, Nazarene. And all of those denominations, many of the denominations that you know now, that sprang out in the late, real late 1800s, early 1900s. And it was over the issue of sanctification and holiness by and large. What happened in that there were some branches of these movements that came out of these older denominations. Uh, for instance, tongues. And, and, and that got taken to an extreme to where some of them preached that if you didn't speak in tongues, you weren't saved. And then if you then you come over here and if you're not sanctified holy, in other words, you, uh, it, they would talk about coming up to the altar and praying until midnight and until God does some kind of power. And, and that may be for somebody. I'm not saying it's not. But if you didn't have that experience, then you probably weren't saved. If you didn't speak in tongues, you probably weren't saved. But what was underneath all of this was this, was a desire to say, you know, the Bible teaches holiness. And just because we got a, a religious name tag on us doesn't, and then we can't go out and cheat people in life. You can't go out, you don't, don't go around and not pay your bills. Don't go around you, you running off with another woman. Don't, don't talk to us about Christianity that permits that kind of stuff and it was seeping into the churches and preachers quit preaching on sin. And they said, we're coming out of here and we're going to seek holiness in what Satan did was a back door on them. And in seeking that, there are a lot of issues that came in that people said, wait a minute, that's not scripture. You didn't, you're not doing it. I mean, I could show you stuff at my house of, of preachers that came out of those things and stuff they embraced is totally unscriptural. But their desire was to get back to a holy life. Okay? Living in holiness and to be known for treating you know, people right, doing right in business, dressing right, immorality. Uh, again, monetary interchanges and so forth. Attitudes when, you're, when you've been offended. And they wanted holiness. So they thought, well, I'll follow Christ. So there was this breakout. By the way, can I say something to you? I literally believe you're seeing some of that in the United States now. A lot of times there's always going to be a reaction when, pe when we've gotten away from the Bible. And when Satan sees that movement start coming, then he starts injecting stuff to mess it up. Or the seeds of his destruction are sown in his birth usually. But I'm just going to say something. In this church, the way I feel God leading me is, is that I feel like I have been influenced to shy away from being identified as a holy roller. Okay? Why, did, why is there the term holy roller? Does anybody know? How many has ever heard the term? Okay. Yes, they would get in the floor and roll. Okay? Everybody's like, you're claiming to be holy, and you're claiming to have an experience with God, but you're rolling in the floor? And you're being immodest? Right in front of everybody in the neighborhood? And this is some kind of manifestation of holiness? And so they coined this phrase, holy roller. But when they did that, they attached that to the general movement of people who genuinely wanted to draw closer to God and live a life pleasing to God. And so what happened is, I'll just be honest with you, I mean, like, when, what, I, you know, when I got, first got saved, I would go to churches that uh, spoke in tongues and all this kind of stuff, you know, and I'm going to be honest, I never did feel that, I never, my spirit never did, uh, something, something's wrong, and I'll tell you what's wrong with it, it's not what's happening now is not biblical in the sense, you can't, I can take you to a church tonight. It does not match what Scripture says. Women are absolutely forbid to speak in tongues. They're not speaking church. That's in, Acts, that's in 1 Corinthians 14, the big chapter that they use for tongues. Let women keep, your women keep silence. So you got most, and by the way, about 90% of the church services I've ever been in, it's usually women speaking in tongues. All, so what I did, watch this, so what I did, I had a tendency... 
because I was preaching in Pentecostal holiness, assemblies of God. Some of the greatest meetings I've ever preached in is where God moved was in those churches. But there's things what happens to you, you'll, you'll have a tendency to say, I'm going to get away from that. Yeah. Okay. Sanctification. You've got to be sanctified holy. You know, you, know like, you pull away from that. What I'm telling you right now is I want to pull my life, and I hopefully I, I hope this helps you and, your, and the church, that our church would be biblical. I don't want to be anywhere but biblical. Amen. I'm not interested in this way. I'm not interested in that way. Yeah. If it's of God in the Bible and Amen. truly truly matches what the Bible says, that's where I want to be at. Amen. And I'm going to say this to you. I have neglected in my own life personally and as a pastor the doctrines of sanctification and holiness. And I'll admit it. And I've asked God to forgive me. And I, and I, I tell you something. We have a holy God. Amen. And when I talk about holiness, I just mean simple, simply not. I strictly do not mean putting on airs, putting on the dog like you're holy, holy. That we do this and we don't do this. So that makes us holy people. No, it does not. And an attitude that we're superior to people. I, I just want an humble, an humble obedience to God. A ha humble, happy obedience to what the Bible teaches. That, that's all I'm after. Because you know what I know? Whether you like it or not, I like to be happy. Amen. I like to have clear heart, yes. the joy of the Lord. And when I'm in violation of the Bible, I can't have that. Amen. And I can't do this in the power of my flesh. Now, I can yield to God, but I can't make it happen. I have to have God working through His Word in my heart. To turn my heart to the Lord into a happy obedience and, and leaving this world. Uh, I've said this a thousand times maybe. When God saved Israel down in Egypt after the blood was applied out of there. And Egypt is a type of this world and God don't save nobody but what he takes out of the world. And so I hope, I hope we get, so we're going to take off tonight and here we go. I hope you'll enjoy these verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3. For this is the will of God. Look at this. Even your what? Sanctification. sanctification. Now again, let's just... What is sanctification? It's letting God separate you from the world's ways, the world's wisdom. Everything that the world thinks is right is wrong. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. If the world's doing it, it ain't God's way. You can just mark it down. So I'm separating you from them. That same thing. Separated unto Christ. Separated unto holiness. Which means set apart unto God. There's God, and again, I'm going to go back to this issue of marriage. I don't believe anybody in this building would, would but what you'd agree, that if you're going, to, you're going to marry this gal, you want her sanctified unto you. Amen. She ain't going to ever say, I'm going to live with you three nights a week, and an old boyfriend, I'm going to go live with him four nights a week. You say, no, it ain't happening. Amen. And boy, if there's anything in the world, we ought to be with our Savior. Amen. It's not double-minded. All right, so here we go. He says, this is the will of God. So tonight, listen, what you do with this is going between you and God. Because I sure can't make you do it. I want, I want, I'm going to say flat out tonight, I want sanctification in my life. I want holiness in my life. And I, that's the will of God for me. That you should abstain from fornication. Goes further that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, yeah. not in the lust of concupiscence, that sh shameless immorality, being immoral, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Look at verse six: that no man go beyond and defraud his brother, cheating, cheating people. We're talking about practical, everyday, getting up in the morning, doing business with people, doing right. We're talking about. We're talking about. Not charging, you get to late work and not, or, or stealing or whatever. You know, if you get to late work, but you still want paid for the time you, they stole. If it's 10 minutes, you stole 10 minutes. Now you say, well, the employer stole 10 minutes off me. That don't mean you've got to steal off him. Render no man evil for evil. Remember what I told you? All around this verse in First Thessalonians chapter, First Thessalonians 5 is aspects of sanctification. Render no man evil for evil. How do you do that? By the sanctification of the Lord. How do you rejoice evermore? By being sanctified. And I'm just going to tell you something. I beg of us all tonight in Jesus' name to not be afraid to hold the banner of sanctification unto the Lord and, and holiness unto the Lord. He said, well, they'll call me a holy roller. Let them call you what they want. 
Let them, let them say what they want. You ain't going to make that world happy anyway. You went and drunk their beer night and got drunk with them and, and ruined your marriage. After that, they laugh at you while you're in the ditch. They don't care about you. The devil don't care about you. Get over the world mocking you and, and making fun of you and say, I'm here to please Christ and not my friends. If my friends don't want to hang around me because I want sanctification and holiness, that's their problem, not mine. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what, we need to get, when you study about what God says about the world, friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You, that's, that, that needs to be preached all over this country. Anyway, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. We're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath wrought from the beginning, chose, hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth. Now, when we go down through here, some of these sanctifications are going to be that salvation sanctification when He saved you. Others are going to be positioned. See if you can spot that out. 1 Peter 1.2. We'll try to run through these. We've got a lot of scriptures covered. First Peter 1 and verse number 2. Unto whom it was revealed that... Uh, there you go. Thank you. Elect according to foreknowledge of God the Father through what? Sanctification of the Spirit. Unto what? Obedience. Obedience. Yeah. Sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace be multiplied. How? Because you've been sanctified. Letting God draw you to Himself. Separating you from the world. Hey, should the world not see a difference in us? Amen. They, they ought to know there's something different about those people. Let me tell you how you get messed up. Don't want to make anybody mad tonight. But uh, as a general principle, uh, uh, Amish people, I love them. Mennonite people, I love them. I, I don't know the ins and outs about everybody's personal relationship with God. But a lot of Amish people that's been saved that were Amish will tell you, you don't hear the gospel there. It's all those rules. It's what the bishop says you can do or can't do. And if you don't do that, you'll die and go to hell. But if you do what he says, you might might possibly, you can't know for sure, be saved. That's not the gospel. Amen. Me driving a tractor without without glass in it ain't saved nobody. Amen. Me driving a tractor that I can't put a front end loader on don't save nobody. Amen. But at the same time, you know what they do kind of have? I mean, I don't, you don't see men and night women out there running around showing their flesh. I can tell you that much. I praise God for that. I'm not saying you got to go around and try to look. I, I, dressing like a nun don't make you holy. Right. But I tell you one thing: there ought to be something. You know, we're going. Well, I don't want there a bunch of hypocrites right there. You got no, 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 no. Don't let that ruin it for you. Don't let that ruin it for you. you, you know, there's a, listen. If I wanted to put on an outward show, I'd put on a backward collar and come up here in a black robe. How many like to see me next Sunday? Come in here, big old black robe, and a backward collar, going holy, holy, holy. I am holy. You can get sick of that and make you sick, right? Yeah. We're not after that. We're not after an outward show. Just plain old simple modesty. Amen. Plain old simple being honest in business. Yeah. Be truthful about things. Don't be lying and deceiving and all that kind of garbage. Just shell the truth out and get honest. Anyway, let's go on 315. Let's see. Did, I get, uh, did we get 315 guys on that? May have not. I didn't know it. There, first... Corinthians one thirty. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Let's try first Peter three fifteen is what I need. First Peter three fifteen. But here we go. Oh my, here's a good one. I, I'm glad we went back. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Man. God, remember, remember the spirit, soul, and body? What's in here will manifest what's out there. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. I'm telling you, if He's down here in my heart, and He's sanctified unto me, and I'm being faithful to Him, as a bride ought to be to her husband, boy, I'm going to tell you something, it ain't going to be no problem. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what it make, you know what I, I believe I'd fall over dead in my heart attack if Karen rolled over to me tonight and said, I've lived with you 40, how many years have we been married, Karen? 46? I've lived with you 46 years, but it ain't been because I love you, because I said I would, and I'm going to do it. Oh. <laughs> I think she just need to call the back home and get my grave ready. I think I'd just probably die of a heart attack right there. I want to ask you something, Brother Stamper. You want that woman to stay with you because she has to? You want her to wash your clothes and cook you dinner because she has to? Why do you want her to do it? Because she loves me. That's where God wants to take us. 
Well, it's Sunday. I guess I better go to church, Red Joe, wonder where we're at. <laughs> What'd you say? No, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> You're probably right. I might think about it on the way home. Oh, so-and-so weren't there today. That's a bit, that's honest truth. Yeah. I, 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 somebody said something about this morning. said, boy, a lot of people at church went, I didn't even know how he knows it. I'm just preaching. My mind gets, I mean, I get in preaching mode, and I don't even know if there's five out there or 500. I preach it. And I'm not real, I mean, I'm just, you know, but I, I tell you what, boy, I love that verse. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Let's go to the next now. Thank you, guys. 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, whom God has made unto us. This is what Christ is made unto us. Right, wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Let's go to Jeremiah 1, 1, 5. This will get your goat. Listen to this here. Watch this verse here. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Uh-huh. Woo! Amen. Before! Yeah. Not why, but before. Yeah. God formed you in the belly. You're killing somebody God formed when you kill that baby. I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I did what? And ordained thee a prophet of a nation. You know what I see every once in a while? I said something van night. Some little kid will come through here and, and, and some little kid act honor, you know. You know what I look at? I say, he may be a preacher someday. God picks honorary ones, amen. You don't know who you've got, you don't know who you're sitting close to. But I'm telling you you don't. Oh, we got to run. We're having a good time. John 17. Look at here. Now watch this. And here you go. This is one of the big ones. Sanctify them through thy truth. Yeah. Thy word is truth. Amen. That's how sanctification is going to happen. By reading the word of God, obeying the word of God, heeding the word of God, putting the word of God in your heart. Read, read, read. Think about it. Keep your mind on it. If it look at verse number 19. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. That's Jesus speaking. That they also may be sanctified through the truth. Truth will sanctify you. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I, I love truth. It hits me. It's, it gets me. But I want you to tell me the truth. I'm glad I got a God who tells me the truth about who I am. I'm glad I got a Bible who tells me the truth about who I am. If I know the truth, I can get something done with it. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 26. Look at this. He, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He is taking the marriage relationship, using it and showing you the picture it is of Jesus Christ and the church. And he's saying that he, Christ, might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word. That's how the sanctification occurs. Voice water by the word. Hebrews chapter 13. Wherefore Jesus also that he might do what? Sanctify the people with his own blood. Sanctification is important. Suffered without the gate. Look at verse number 3. Here it is. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. Sanctification taking us out of here. Bearing the reproach. Oh, that bunch of holy rollers over at Liberty Faith. Let them call us what they will. Bear the reproach. Oh, they, they don't bless. I, you know why I've heard stuff like, well, if you don't have uh, six kids or 12 kids, you, don't, you can't go to that church. <laughs> if you don't wear this, you can't go to that church. That's nonsense. I never said that. Amen. But people talk. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, but listen, it's okay. If, if, if you be reproached for Christ's name, happy are ye. Amen. 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 This is, hey, can I just tell you, this is why we fight sanctification and, and holiness. is because we know there's going to be some flack come with it. Amen. But I want to be identified with him. I, I'm just be honest with you, I don't care what, what they think or say. All right, here we go. Let's do that. They're already ahead of me. Look at them guys. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Look at that next verse. I have coveted no man's silver, gold, or apparel. Sanctification will take, can I just say, the Holy Ghost, Amen. through the sanctification of the Word, can do more for you and I in three split seconds than a preacher can preach ten years to you. Amen. You read your Bible and, and God deals with you about something, the Holy Ghost can say, I want you to stop that and I want you to change the way you're operating. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. 26, 18. Open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. Uh, okay, let's go to Romans. Uh, let's, let's go on down. Let's go on down to Romans 15, verse number 16, guys, if you will. 
that I should be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Again, to, all right, 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Under the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are what? Sanctified in Christ Jesus. Called to be what? Saints. Saint. When did American churches, the people in American churches, quit calling themselves saints? There used to be a song. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the church members go marching in. Saints. 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 Now, I want to ask you something. It, it, God dealt with me here a while back to call the church people beloved. You know why? Because that's what the Bible calls them. Paul called the, the saints beloved. I wonder what happened next this week if I saw you out this week and I said, Van, that's my saint brother. He'd probably go, yeah, you're really a saint. He knows me too well. But what, what, do we want to even be called saints? Do we want to even be recognized as a people who desire to be holiness? Do we want to, do we, we, do, would we want anybody outside this building to even know we're hearing this message? I mean, are we willing to be recognized as saints? It's a Bible word. Amen. Sanctification is a Bible doctrine. Amen. Let's not run from it. Let's run to it. Amen. All right, let's go again. Here we go. First Corinthians six eleven. And such for some of you, but you're washed, salvation. But you're sanctified. But you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. How come we're all time, you know, salvation and justification and reconciliation, but not sanctification? Uh, 714, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else your children are clean, but now they're holy. It gets back to this marriage thing, We're talking about one, whether one, when one is lost or the other is saved, the children are still sanctified, still set apart, still before the Lord, they're not illegitimate children just because one spouse may not be saved. Follow me? Hmm. Rabbit trail, don't go there. Second Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2. If a man therefore purge himself in these, he should be vessel unto honor. Look at that, what? Sanctified. Now, what happens as a result of that sanctification? Look at it. Meat for the master's use. Prepared unto every good work. Sanctification prepares you to be used of God. Meat for the master's use. How many things does God use a fornicator? An adulterer. Ye that bear the vessel of the Lord, be ye clean. That's what saying faith. We're not talking about some super spirituality. We're just talking about, hey, you know what? Living right, by the grace of God, live right. When I mess up, confess that sin, straighten up, get back on the road, and don't tinker around with it. An attitude to obey the Lord and live right, no matter what we're talking about. Not talking about putting on a Holy Joe scene out here with nobody. Not trying to act like we're spiritually superior to anybody. In fact, we're humble. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. By the grace of God. I want God to get all the glory. If there's any good in me, give God the glory for it. Amen. Meet for the master's use. That'd be a good message to preach. All right, let's go to the next one, guys. Appreciate all that you're doing. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, uh, uh, 19. Does that, we get the, Yeah. That's not the one I'm after, guys. But anyway, just hope, bring that back down. I'm sorry. I know what I was after right there. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Iniquity in its base meaning is going your own way and doing what you want to do in spite of what God's Word says. Iniquity is bad. It's wicked. And he says, if you name the name of Christ, you depart from iniquity. You stay away from that stuff. Verse 23. Flee also, but foolish and unlearned question, avoid knowing it, do gender strive. All this stuff has to do with sanctification, the work of sanctification in your life. Verse 21. Verse 21. Bring that down then, together. I'm sorry. 
There you go. If man, yeah, that's what we got. All right. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, because I got somewhere I want to get. By the will, by which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's positional sanctification right there. All right. Verse number 14 in Hebrews chapter 10. For one offering hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. This is the positional sanctification that when you got saved, God, God sanctified you unto himself. You became God's child. You're not a child of the devil. All righty. Okay, Jude chapter 1, or Jude verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, brother of James, to them that are what? Sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. I just want to say, this is just a sample of the verses on sanctification in your Bible. And I'm here to declare to all of us tonight is that sanctification is not to be neglected or to be shoved off or, or act like it's not there. The beautiful part about it is what I like. I don't want, I want sanctification of the Spirit of God through the Word of God as opposed to church, our church rules or our church standards, right. which we may try to impose on each other. Right. And again, I'm telling you right now, when the Holy Spirit's doing it, it'll get done and it'll get done right. Yeah. When you and I are trying to impose standards on people, it mess, it turns them into rebels. Right. All right, now. Go to Romans chapter 6. And I'm not, it, it, I, I, I always get too much going on. What should we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And it goes on down. The whole chapter of Romans chapter 6 is about after you're saved, about sanctification and the work of the Spirit in you doing this sanctification. I love it the way the Holy Ghost did it. Chapter 7 takes you back and says, but don't forget you have a flesh nature you're going to be dealing with every day. Then it takes you to chapter 8 and tells you how to have victory over the flesh every day. And so this is laid out exactly in about sanctification. Sanctification is not that you're going to get rid of your old nature, but that you're going to have victory over the old nature. By the power of God. Okay, now, guys, go to this other uh, deal if you want to. And I want everybody to take your Bibles. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Now, I'm a little bit scared of having scriptures up on the wall all the time. How many likes to have scriptures up on the wall? I, I like it. I really do. It helps to move along a little bit quicker. But I'll tell you what the danger is, that you won't, take your, that you won't open your Bibles. So your Bible is just sitting there in your lap. You know, let me just say something. There's people listening online tonight. And, and, you know, and hey, I know that we all should be in some local assembly somewhere, right? Forsake not the assembly together. But there are many people listening out there. In fact, just this week, I, I, two or three people, there are no churches. I've got a card right up here somewhere. Some people that there is no Bible-believing church in their region. There's not one church that uses the King James Bible, has any, and they're just, it just they don't have it. And so they find some, you know, I know it would be best to be in church. But there's people that don't have, so don't condemn people online too bad. You know, it's funny to me that everybody's against people watching the services online, but they weren't against the TV when all the TV evangelists were. That was all right. Anyway, I'll get off that. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse number 21. Let's go to verse number 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is given even in private interpretation. Watch this. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but what? Holy men of God. I want to I ask a question. Let's have a discussion. What is a holy man? Now, the Bible said that God used holy men to write, write in the Word. We just got to reading that. There'll be meat for the master, sanctified meat for the master's use. I want to give you something tonight in this. Who did God use to write this book? Holy, Holy men. Does that mean that they were kind of super spiritual people that uh, uh, some kind of? Uh, he, let me throw this one at you. Do you know why we quit using the word saints in our on our Bible leading churches? Because the Catholic Church has got saint, 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 saint. We know it's all a joke. Right. Saint Thomas and Saint Bartholomew and Saint So and So and Saint So and So and Saint So and So, and you just get kind of like, ugh. And you see a statue of Saint So and So. And this name Saint Saint Louis. Did you ever think about that? And one of the deals is that there's some kind of a superior level up here that the common guy can't attain to, or you know, he just there's this. No, no. 
saints is just people that are saved, separated unto God, heart turned toward the Lord, obedient to the word of God. Why are we letting the Catholic Church teach cheat us out of the word saints? Why are we letting we are letting a wrong doctrine cheat us out of sanctification? Out of holiness. I'm just here to tell you, I don't care whether people like this or not. If it's in the Bible, I want it. If it's right, I want it. We better have it in this church. I'm going to give account to God for what I preach. We not, should not be afraid to be called people that are holy unto the Lord, people that are, are saints of the Lord. We ought not be afraid of, 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 of being sanctified by the Holy Ghost, the Word of God. Amen. It does not mean some kind of spiritual superiority. Actually, what it means is humble, broken people that God has saved who have a desire to walk with God honestly and in truth. We're going to be looking at something here in a little bit. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, so they were holy men that God used. You say, Richard, what are you talking about? Again, honest in your business dealings. You know, how, how many people list it all on your tax assessor's deal? You put down everything? <laughs> I mean, we're, not, we're not careful. We're lying. <laughs> we're, not, we're not putting things down or we're, you know. My dad was an assessor for 20 years, and I know a little bit about it, okay? And that's back when the assessor went to all the houses, yeah. drove to them all. And I've, I've been with him. I've heard him do He said to the assessor, he said, oh, he probably what, got $10 worth of furniture. Now, this is back in the 50s and 60s, okay? But he just, you know, he went, he said, he said well, you got 10 milk cows? Now, dad wasn't trying to cheat nobody. But he, he had a real strong deal that people are taxed enough. You know, he wasn't trying to be stupid or anything like that. But what are you going to do? Go over there and, and this chair is worth $3 and that chair is worth $17 and that chair is worth... You know, he just... So, and I, I use that for together. But just he just tried to just generalize it and, and not excessively put stuff... Because a lot of the truth about it was some stuff wasn't worth nothing. If you all know the truth about it. If you don't believe I'm doing it, try to sell a, try to sell a high to bed at auction. Try, I'll tell you something else. Try to sell an upright piano that's 50 years old at an auction. You can't give it away. They'll sit and tell you, well, if you if you haul it and move it for me, I'll take it. I ain't hauling it. I ain't moving. I don't want that stupid thing. A lot of stuff people think is worth a lot. How many knows that your recliner chair ain't worth spit? Your recliner chair is not worth nothing. But... I, but here's what I want to say. But we'd better be honest. And don't lie and don't cheat and don't deceive. Pay your bills. Be long-suffering. Don't be greedy. Don't be envious. Get rid of that anger. Not, we know, you know what the prophet Nathan said to David? He said, by doing this, you have brought great reproach on the name of the Lord. That's the whole reason to do right, to be sanctified, is don't bring reproach on Jesus Christ. All right, let's take off here. I heard Brother... Uh, uh, Marcus yawning. I better get to moving. I'm just teasing you. Uh, I heard you go, Amen. <laughs> I thought it was funny myself. Bless his heart. Amen. <laughs> All right. The holy men of God. All right. Now let's go to Psalms 96. We're going to run through about 10 verses and we'll be done. I, I promise you. Okay. Oh, Marcus, I mean to you, ain't I? <laughs> Psalm 96, verse number nine, five. Oh, get verse number nine. Oh, worship the Lord in beauty of what? Holiness. holiness. Now remember, sanctification and holiness weld together in the Bible. Don't be afraid of the word holiness. We're supposed to be. Look at verse number nine, five, five now. That's not the right one. Well, I put that wrong. I'm sorry, guys. Go to Zechariah 14.10. Zechariah 14.10. We're going to look at a few verses here about holiness. But first of all, remember this. God used holy men to write the Word of God. Amen. He didn't use men that weren't living right. Amen. He didn't use men that were just living in open rebellion and said, I'll do what I want to, not what, not what God says to. And if you're going to be used to the Lord, you're going to see God's power work in your life. You better be living holy. Amen. Zechariah 14.10. How come I'm not getting right? And alive, I'm aggravated at myself. 
Anyway, the verse says about holiness unto the Lord. And the highway of holiness during the millennial reign. Huh? 20? Did I put, is it 20? Thank you. There it is. Thank you so much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. In that day, there shall be upon the belt of the horses holiness unto the Lord. I, I think that'd be a good verse. Our life ought to be holiness unto the Lord. Malachi 2.11. I want you to look at this here. Malachi 2.11. Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord. Now look at this tight. This is getting ready. This is the giving about why they went into captivity. They profaned the holiness of the Lord. Holiness is not a laughing matter in the sense that you just throw it off. They were living, they were going to the temple and living like hell. And they profaned the holiness of the Lord. Go back to the Old Testament, show you how it was being done. Eli had, he had sons. What were they doing? They were messing with the women at the church. His own sons. And he wouldn't do nothing about it. Knew about it. Wouldn't do anything about it. Profane the holiness of the Lord. What did God do to him? God said, I'll cut you off. Instead, all your generations are going to suffer because you messed around and you profane the holiness of Almighty God. All right, let's go to Luke one seventy five. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Romans 1, 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of what? Holiness. Holiness. Romans 6, 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members service to uncleanness and to iniquity and to iniquity, that was back when you were lost. Even so now, yield your members service to righteousness unto holiness. Amen. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, look at it, here it is. This is practical holiness. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I just pray tonight. I'm not preaching, honestly. I'm just giving you verses. I just pray tonight that we'll see that this is an important subject in the Word of God. And I'm not talking about some kind of, again, spiritual put on on the outside. And living like dirt on the inside. I'm talk, in fact, I'm talking about down inside. Yeah. Just do what's right and tell the truth no matter what. Yeah. Do what's right. Ephesians 4.24 is one of my favorite verses. Now watch this verse. Everybody watch this verse. And that you put on a new man, which after God is created... That's your salvation, right? The new man in righteousness and true holiness. Why did the Holy Ghost say true holiness? Everybody pay attention. Why did the Holy Ghost say true holiness? Because God knows we'll put on fake holiness. Fake holiness we'll put on. Now I realize that's talking about the creation of the new man, which is created in true, true holiness. But I tell you, God's not in the phony baloney business. God's not in the hypocrisy business. Ephesians 1, 4. According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. What wonderful verses. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7. For God hath not called us to uncleanness, but unto what? Holiness. Holiness. Separated unto Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 3. Age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving them much wine, teaches good things, teach the young women to be sober, love their husbands, love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient. What's he doing? He's telling you what holiness is in a practical, outworking manner. All those things. Likewise, young men, so forth. I'm again I'm telling you, I'd go home and I'd study these things. And I'd say, Lord. I just want you at work in my heart and my life. Let's look at, the, at Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 10. For verily, for a few days, for they verily, for a few days, chastened, af, chastened us after their own pleasure. Talking about your father, your earthly father. But he, your heavenly father, chastened you for our profit. That we might be partakers of what? His holiness. 
I want to encourage you tonight. When God chastises you and I, part of the process and end game is, is holiness in our lives. Right living before the Lord. Obedient, surrendered, doing what we know is right. Thinking right. Acting right. Everything in our spirit, soul, and body. Holy sanctified. Verse number 14. Follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Powerful verses. God help us not to neglect sanctification and holiness. And I'm done. I got a lot of other stuff, but I'm, I think that's all. I think how many got about much you can take home with you? All right. And trucks loaded. <laughs> and uh, I love you, Lord. Uh, let's uh, right now. Let's just pray. God, do a work of your Spirit in my heart. Give me a desire and the power to think holy. Pure, obedient, aligned with Scripture. To act in the things that I think and do and say. I want. I don't want my mouth not being holy. I don't want unholy stuff coming out of my mouth. I don't want unholy thoughts running through my head. And thinking on them and meditating on them. I don't want unholy things done with my hands. I don't want to be in some unholy place with my feet. I don't want my ears hearing unholy things. I don't want my eyes seeing and feasting on vulture meat. And this is just part of this whole thing. Back to verse 23. That your whole spirit, soul, and body, wholly sanctified, set apart unto Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this evening. And Lord, this is your holy word. I'm glad we have a holy Bible. And Lord, you said these verses, Lord, without holiness, which no man shall see the Lord. Perfecting holiness. God, you have called us into sanctification, being set apart unto Jesus Christ. You called us away from and out of this world. All of its fads, all of its music, all of its junk, all of its lies and deception. All of its hatred for the things of God. And Lord, I pray that in this church and in our own personal lives that true holiness, not some fakey stuff, Lord, on Sunday. But Lord, when we go out tomorrow morning, that our conduct, our thoughts, our words, our attitudes, and our motives, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, that, our, that it would be holy. That our thoughts and our words and our attitudes would be pleasing unto you and obedient to Scripture. Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to humble ourselves and to know that we cannot live, and, and, and this is not something that we can do in ourselves, but Lord, under your mighty hand. But Lord, I just pray that we would be humble people, a people sanctified unto you, a people holy before you, Lord. And God, that we'd not watch things we shouldn't watch, hear things we shouldn't hear, do things we shouldn't do. God, I pray that the joy of the Lord will be ours, that we would have a good peace, a good steady solidness to our lives. And Lord, when we mess up and sin, God help us to be real quick to acknowledge it and confess it, and get it under the blood and get back on the road. Lord, when we're tempted to not tell the whole story about something to gain financially, God, help us not to do that. Help us to tell anything we'd want to be told if we were buying it. Lord, I pray, help us just to do right in our business dealings with other people. And though other people may, may cheat us, God, help us not to render evil for evil. And Lord, I just pray, do a sanctifying work in my heart. And I mean it, Lord, I just need it. God, I just pray, pray that that be, uh, Lord, what you do. And help me, Lord, to be yielded, surrendered to it. And Lord, not to help us especially, Lord, not to put on no airs about being holy and sanctified. Just simple, childlike obedience to you and surrender and submission and yieldedness to the Word of God. Lord, I tell you, you know the truth is, Lord, I have no business preaching this, God. Other than the fact that you've called me to preach your Word. Now, Lord, I'm preaching in deeper water than I'm swimming in. 
God, I pray that you'd help me to practice what I preached to these people. Help me, Lord, not to be a hypocrite. And Lord, I just want to tell you I love you and I thank you for the truth. And Lord, I pray these people and their families that you'd bless them, Lord, and that we'd be separated people unto you in every area of our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together tight. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I'm not sure but what John Wesley said this, but some old preacher way back said, Wilt thou be happy? Be holy. Wilt thou be happy? Be holy. Let's live right for God. Amen. Love you all. You're dismissed. And uh, let's have an exciting time. Next Sunday morning, we're going to hear lots of great singing. Amen. And uh, have a great time next Sunday morning. We'll have Bible class and then the Christmas gathering later.